I'm near the East River in New York City where a week ago a helicopter crashed killing five people. Only the pilot survived. It was the deadliest helicopter crash in New York City in nine years. Now investigators are still looking into what caused the accident but one obvious problem was the harnesses that kept the passengers strapped into their seats. When the helicopter rolled over in the river right behind me, the passengers were unable to free themselves. The victims were in an open door helicopter tour, tours which have become increasingly popular as tourists seek hair raising photographs they can share on social media. But aviation experts warn passengers are not properly trained on what to do when something goes wrong in an open door helicopter and the harnesses can become death traps. If these completely unforgiving harnesses that are almost impossible to get out of are required in order to have open cockpit flights, then safety almost demands that you don't have open cockpit flights. On Friday, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, which regulates the industry, announced a temporary ban on open-door helicopter tours. It said it would also look into its rules regulating helicopter flights in general. According to the United States Helicopter Safety Team, in 2017, there were 121 reported helicopter accidents in the U.S. 20 of them were fatal, killing 34 people. Now, Slack, who represents family members of victims of helicopter crashes, says tour operators are stretching themselves thin, trying to maximize profits by working their pilots and equipment for long hours. Long hours means fatigue for pilots, uh, overutilization for the helicopters, and then the unusual weather circumstances that many times the pilots are not uh, experienced with when they become uh, pilots in a new area. Slack says you can go to the National Transportation Safety Board's website to find a particular tour operator to get information on their safety record, but the reality is few do. Liberty Helicopters, which owned and operated the helicopter that crashed last week, has a spotty record. In 2009, one of its helicopters collided with a plane over the Hudson River, killing six people on the helicopter and three on the plane. Two years before that, it was involved in another non-fatal crash. Slack says some operators are worse than others, but safety is a problem within the entire industry. I tell people to exercise caution. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think it is, is worth the risk. Uh, and, and typically there's a lot of tragedy associated with it because typically friends and family do it together. So when there's a bad outcome, uh, typically it wipes out a family unit or a group of friends. The victims in last week's crash consisted of two high school friends, two colleagues and a tourist from Argentina. All were under the age of 35. Karina Huber, CGTN, New York.